hello everybody i am uh faith lawrence i'm from the national archives and i am here to talk about project omega looking at modeling the archive catalog uh to support future history uh so for those people who aren't familiar with it the national archives are the government archives and the official publisher for the uk so we have over a thousand years of British and world history stored away in various vaults and salt mines uh, with diverse content from doors and mummified rats to the more boring and expected large amounts of paperwork uh, that a government will generate. Um, one of the important things I want to note is that we have these initiatives that run uh, for sort of four year periods and the most recent one is archives for everyone which is what we're working through at the moment and a big part of that is wanting to make the archive more inclusive more entrepreneurial and more disruptive uh, the catalog itself has uh, a fair number of records in there uh, over 16 million catalog entries uh, and over 9 million digitized and born digital assets um, we tend to think of it in uh, distance, and I'm afraid I can't remember quite how many kilometers it is, but it is quite a lot. Um, so we're dealing with a fair amount of, uh, of um, documents. The issue is the current catalog system. We have multiple overlapping databases of information, and this results in a very complex pathway to publication from what we have at the back end site where we've got the editorial process and the, all the information for the catalogue, uh, getting it to the public so they can see what we have in the catalogue and access it. This means we're frequently lacking a single source of truth because the data is in multiple places. And the back end system itself is, uh, well, we say reaching end of life, but most of the systems it runs on, run on are no longer supported. The programming system it's written in is no longer supported. And uh, as a result, we've got a large number of limitations that mean we can't improve the system because honestly, we don't want to touch it. If it falls over, we're not sure we can get it back again. And it, it really is very much the backbone of the archive. So what do we want to hey, do? Just a small yeah. question. Uh, your presentation, should it go for, um, yeah, proceed or are you just still on the, on the first page of your presentation? Ah, okay. It, it was proceeding for me. So let me, uh, let me try that again. Uh, because we only see the, the, um, yeah, the back end in some way. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. So hang on. Right. So for everybody, sorry for that. Yeah, we had no, the time sorry, to my check apologies. Uh, let's let's do it like that. So let me. Uh, now we see the swan. Yep. Yeah, Archives for everyone. Discovery. Yeah. yeah, it should work. Great. Yep. Yeah. And the state of the cataloging system. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yes, so um, the idea is we need to create a new catalogue backend uh, for editorial purposes to take advantage of more recent programming practices, uh, amazing innovations like the fact that the computer knows what year it is and therefore where we have things that are set to happen every year, we don't need to manually go in and change the date, you know, little minor programming improvements from the last 20 years like that um, to improve the ingestion procedure where we get the data from in from government the current procedure is very clunky and uh, involves uh, a very hard to maintain Perl script and uh, command line interface which isn't the best for our archivists uh, to improve reliability and uh, allow us to include extra information such as provenance that is currently being lost and not recorded. Our hope is also that we will be able to have better linking not only internally but allowing us to link to resources externally uh, that uh, will allow us to enrich our content and enrich other people's content. 
uh, for example, recently, uh, well, I think believe last week we shared details with Archives Portal Europe for our catalogue. So that's the sort of first step in allowing our catalogue to link up with others more closely. Um, the idea is for staff, this makes the whole system easier to use. Uh, it can do some automated error checking. There's generally a better system and less likely to fail. For the public, it will hopefully allow more information to be available for the records and uh, support that information uh, in ways for them to use it in new and interesting ways. Um, so the team, we have both uh, people at the archives themselves and our wonderful consultant developers, uh, especially Adam Retter, who's been involved from the start and has been doing most of the actual heavy lifting on this. Uh, and Rob and, and uh, Jeshuri joined him more recently. So the first thing, data models have got mentioned quite a lot, and obviously that is going to be the underlying uh, issue for us. So a large part of the first bit of the project was deciding what data model that we needed to use. Uh, so as part of that, we evaluated 11 data models, both internal and external, against a number of functions and functional requirements and test cases uh, that were extracted from our current actual user needs. Um, one of the important things for us is that we have both a born physical and a born digital, and I think we have some hybrid records coming soon. Um, and so it was important that whatever data model we ended up with, could cope with both physical and digital and trans-digital and hybrid data models. Um, one of the main themes that we pulled out of doing these tests is that while the older standards mostly use hierarchical models, the more modern standards had almost all adopted graph models, which really helped us decide on the future direction. Uh, we had initially been thinking about an XML-based uh, system, but uh, looking at this, we definitely ended up going towards a graph-based model. Uh, the graph-based model, we were happy to see, all provided facilities for describing provenance. And they also allowed us to have both a hierarchical arrangement of records and uh, allow ad hoc arrangements, which was important to us, especially with our digital archives. Um, almost all the models had the separation of concept and realisation. Um, and just of interest, we noticed that the tended to be two different types, the archive centric standards, which were very much influenced by ICG and the library centric standards, which were very much introduced by ISBD and MARC. Having gone through that and uh, run the various models against our use cases and requirements, um, we then had some important decisions to make in terms of which one to pick. Uh, there were a number that performed pretty well, um, and so we're having to think about things like reusability versus uh, minting our own, what sort of real world assumptions and things we wanted to make. And it was very important for us as part of the idea of um, sharing uh, to be able to use established standards where possible and to be able to promote reuse. So as a result, while we went with the standard archival data model um, uh, using RIC, which is records in context, we didn't use the uh, model that's been coming out of that, which hadn't been fully published at the time we were doing this, but instead went for a um, approach which was developed by a team uh, which was called the Matterhorn ontology, which used a uh, variety, uh, reused a variety of existing uh, ontologies to implement the uh, records in contests conceptual model. We have, having got the model, been actually putting our data in it. And one of the big challenges we found, not surprisingly, was dates. Uh, not just having to validate our existing data and finding errors in it, which obviously happened, but uh, we had some few issues with uh, programming systems making assumptions and little things like when the Julian calendar became the Gregorian calendar. Uh, this did not happen in the same time across the entire world, and the uh, Java 
program that we were code we were using uh, assumed that it happened at a different time uh, to uh, when it happened in the UK. As a result, we started getting validation errors for dates that did exist with the computer insisting that they in fact didn't exist. Uh, this, this caused some fun and frolics. Um, we're glad to say we finally managed to get that sorted out and there'll be a link later for anybody who's interested in the more nitty gritty of that problem and why it happened. We also had to have a number of discussions about identifiers uh, that are obviously existing identifiers for all the records in the archive, uh, but unfortunately they are not as unique and computer processable as would be needed um, for uh, the sort of uh, underlying uh, computer model that we're looking at. Um, it wasn't possible due to previous people using uh, slashes as part of the identifiers to actually be able to uh, always um, separate from something that was at an item level versus something that was at a higher level up the uh, hierarchy of records. Um, and so as a result, we needed to develop a new identifier system, which would be both persistent and unique as needed for uh, our RDF. And this is going on within the context of other projects that are being developed at the National Archives, especially Project Etna, which is completely redeveloping the front end and uh, allowing the sharing of records with the public. So we're developing the back end, they're redeveloping the front end, and there are other projects going on uh, redeveloping data and databases across the archive and trying to make sure they all interacted with each other appropriately has been a unique and interesting challenge. So progress to date. Uh, the data model, we are now up to version six, um, which is hopefully going to be published shortly. I don't think it's on the website yet. I don't think the uh, link that, you, that was put in the thing, thank you for that, is quite the most recent version, but that should be the link the new, most recent version gets published to. Uh, we have obviously been modeling the taxonomy and the authority files that is people and places so that they can be integrated into the um, ontology and into the network. And one of the big important things is looking at access control uh, because we have documents that are not immediately available to the public. We have some documents which might be available uh, if you are on site or from certain places but are not available elsewhere. And uh, you have versions of the documents with certain information redacted, some of which is redacted for a certain period of time and some of which is permanently redacted unless you go to court and get an order. And so um, being able to specify within the technology uh, who is able to access the documents and at which what point and to have those policies actually encoded and modeled as well was very important. And there's been some really interesting work done there on gradated access going through. Uh, as I mentioned, we've had some interesting in issues with calendar, especially with the switch from the Julian to Gregorian calendar, but also the various other calendars that are used and how we wanted to uh, develop that both from an archival perspective, making sure that the information was uh, archivally happy. Um, but also from a technical perspective, how exactly we could store that information in the data in the computer so that it would be useful. Um, and being able to validate uh, the data that was being pulled out and transformed from our old database system into the RDF. Uh, at this point, we have the item level records extracted into RDF and shared internally with other projects so they can work directly from the RDF. And we're working on uh, doing the uh, higher levels. Um, we're also working on thinking about user stories and uh, the user interface and documenting the work that's being done uh, both on our, sorry, apologies for the slides, uh, on our National Archives site, but also there's a number of blog entries that have been published in Medium, uh, looking at some of the issues to do with identifiers and to do with dates and things. So they are well worth a read. 
Um, next steps, we need to release, as I mentioned, the more recent version of the data model and uh, complete the documentation of the work for extracting the information from the database into RDF. Um, uh, we need to apply it to the higher level records and extend the model where necessary, working very closely with the Born Digital Archive, which is a slightly different uh, data archive, uh, so that that information can be included in and begin to extract that data as well. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, apologies for any technical issues there. There is the link to the website, which has some more details and more links appear there. 